Welcome back to Real Estate School. Today, we have not only a good video, but a very important video regarding real estate agency. I think most of you know this already, but when I say the word agency, we're not saying, welcome to our agency, come on in and sit down. Agency is a word used to define the special relationship we have with our clients. They're called fiduciary relationships. These are relationships of trust and obligation. There are a lot of duties and responsibilities that go along with agreeing to represent somebody in a real estate transaction. So let's get started. The most primary of relationships in real estate brokerage is that between broker and client. The relationship is known as the agency relationship. Agency is a relationship of trust created when one party gives another the right to represent him in dealing with a third party. This is a consensual relationship that both enter into willingly. In every state, a body of law, generally called the law of agency, defines and regulates the legal roles of this relationship. Let's discuss the parties involved in an agency relationship. The individual authorized to represent the client is known as the agent. An agent is authorized and consents to represent the interest of another person in dealing with a third person. The party granting the right of representation through an agency relationship is known as the client or principal of the relationship. The essence of an agency relationship is trust, confidence, and mutual good faith. An agent must always act in the best interest of the principal. Therefore, an agency relationship imposes certain duties, obligations, and high standards of good faith and loyalty on the agent as the representative of the principal. In the most general sense, the relationship between an agent and a principal can be described as a fiduciary relationship, which is one of trust and confidence, where one party owes the other a higher standard of good faith than she owes third parties or customers. The fiduciary role is that of an advocate. An agent owes such duties only to her client. Common law is law that was developed over many years through court decisions and other precedents, as opposed to statutes adopted through the legislative process or regulations issued by the executive branch. Common law defines basic fiduciary duties that an agent owes a client in an agency relationship. We assume, since the court ruled a certain way, this is the way that we should do things. But please note, each state has its own real estate agency laws that dictate the allowable agency relationships and the specific duties that real estate licensees owes to clients and others involved in the transaction. State laws, or statutory law, supersedes the general common law discussed in this video. The common law basic fiduciary duties can be remembered by the acronym Cold AC. First, the duty of care. Real estate licensees must use reasonable care and skill when acting on behalf of a client. Licensees should always be working in their client's best interests, using your skill and training on your client's behalf. The duty of obedience. An agent must follow the legal directions of the principal, obey the restrictions of the agency relationship, and not stray beyond the scope of the given authority. With the duty of loyalty, the agent must put the principal's interest above all others, including the agent's own self-interest. Disclosure. An agent must make a complete disclosure of any material fact or defect, which is anything that would affect someone's decision regarding the transaction if it were known. 
Accounting. The duty of accounting or accountability recognizes the money received in an agency relationship is received on behalf of the principal and not the agent. Since an agent or broker in a real estate transaction acts on behalf of the principal, the agent has the duty to account strictly for any amounts received. The duty of confidentiality. An agent must never share a client's confidential information or take advantage of it for personal benefit. Depending on state law, the duty of confidentiality could terminate on conclusion of the agency relationship or extend for a number of years or forever. Please remember, a real estate transaction can raise many legal questions. Real estate licensees must remember and remind their clients that they are not licensed to practice law. They should never give legal advice or perform any acts that require a lawyer's expertise. Someone the agent works with, but not for, is considered a customer, an unrepresented third party. Real estate licensees must take great care not to use the terms client and customer out of context or improperly, as it may imply a relationship that is not yet established. A licensee owes all the fiduciary duties to a client, but not to a customer in a real estate transaction. For example, the licensee representing a seller owes no loyalty or obedience to the buyer customer. The licensee's duty of loyalty to his seller client prohibits this. A licensee does owe certain basic duties to a customer. For example, disclosure of known material facts about the property or the transaction, adherence to the law, Honesty and Integrity According to the level of authority delegated to the agent, there are three types of agency relationships. Universal, General, and Special. And as we go through this, don't necessarily think real estate agent. This could be a sports star's agent or an entertainer's agent. Rarely in the real estate business are we a universal agent. This is somebody who can make all the decisions on behalf of their client. In particular, they are giving an unlimited power of attorney to make all decisions on behalf of their client. A universal agent is a person empowered to do anything the principal could do personally. The universal agent's authority to act on behalf of the principal is virtually unlimited. For example, the appointment by the court of a guardian or the granting of a power of attorney to someone can create a universal agency relationship. A real estate agent typically does not have this scope of authority in a real estate transaction. General Agency Relationships A general agent may represent the principal in a broad range of matters related to a particular business or activity. The general agent may, for example, bind the principal to any contract within the scope of the agent's authority. A property manager is hired by the owner of an income-producing property is an excellent example of a general agent. The property manager normally signs the lease, binding the owner to the tenant. Another example, a real estate sales associate is usually a general agent of the employing broker, authorized to act as the sub-agent of the broker in a variety of real estate transactions. And when you take a listing, you don't have to have your broker sign that listing in most states. The agent signs the listing agreement, binding the broker to the client. If you are working in listings and sales, you're typically considered a special agent. A special agent has one specific task. Find a buyer for my house or find me a house to buy. A special agent is granted the authority to represent the principal in the specific task or transaction. This is generally a short-term arrangement. A real estate broker is usually a special agent. If hired by a seller, the broker is limited to finding a ready, willing, and able buyer for the seller's property. A special agent for a buyer would have the limited responsibility of finding a property that fits the buyer's criteria. 
a special agent for a tenant will find a property that meets the client's requirements. Again, as a special agent, the real estate broker may not bind the principal to any contract. Okay, well that was some good information. So let's go over a few questions you may see on your real estate exam pertaining to this information. Question number one, what is another word for principal? A, agent. B, client. C, customer. Or D, fiduciary. The answer would be B. The principal in any fiduciary relationship is the client. The agent is also known as a fiduciary, a person who holds a position of trust and confidence. Question number two. Jasper Jones has the power of attorney to care for all aspects of his elderly mother's life. He handles her bills, signs legal papers, and he even takes on the task of selling his mother's house. Which type of agency does this represent? A. General Agency B. Limited Agency C. Special Agency or D. Universal Agency? The answer is D. A Universal Agent. His mother authorized him to do anything and everything that can be lawfully delegated to a representative. Question number three. Melinda is a licensee who worked for broker Angie at King's Realty. As such, Melinda would be considered what type of agent of the broker? A. Melinda is a general agent. B. Melinda is a special agent. C. Melinda is a universal agent. Or D. Melinda is not an agent of the broker. The answer is A. A real estate licensee is a general agent of his or her broker. The broker, the principal in that relationship, give general authority to his agents to conduct real estate business on his or her behalf. Question number four. In a real estate transaction, the term fiduciary typically refers to A. The sale of real property. B. The people who give someone else the legal power to act on their behalf. C. The person who has legal power to act on behalf of another. D. The agent's relationship to the principal. The answer is D. The agent's relationship to the principal. The relationship of the agent to the principal involves care, obedience, loyalty, disclosure, accounting, and confidentiality, a fiduciary relationship. A person with legal power to act for another is an attorney in fact. Most real estate agents do not have such power. Well, we hope this video was very helpful in grasping the concept of real estate agency, a very important topic to be familiar with. Many of your questions on your licensing exam will come from real estate agency. So for more assistance on this topic or many other topics, visit realestatetutorbob.com. Learn about our one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions. Again, thank you for watching. Subscribe below and ring that bell. We'll let you know when we have our next video coming out. Thank you very much.